guys, welcome back. So, uh, another car repair video underway. Uh, this one, the uh, my Dodge Ram 1500 2001 uh, had an issue yesterday driving home from work. Uh, probably 20 minutes before I was home uh, on the freeway. I'm driving, everything's going right, and then all of a sudden the light turns on and says, check your gauges. And, well, they yell like that, but it said, check your gauges. And so I look over and everything's right, and then I notice the voltage said I had no power. I'm like, okay, well, the truck's driving, so how, how's this working? So I'm thinking, okay, crap, the, uh, the, the alternator cooked out, and I'm about to lose all power, and I'm running low on battery. I was thinking, you know, I said eight volts, so I just kept driving, driving, and no power loss. I'm like, okay. And so I'm thinking, well, okay, I must be fine. The uh, it must be running the battery fried, and I'm running only on the alternator. So okay, and uh, make it home. Go to start the truck, or shut the truck off. Go start it, and of course the truck doesn't start. Bad battery. Uh, I tested it. It had less than 12 volts, which is like okay, that's not good. So get the new battery, and. Plug that in, truck runs fine. Get up the next morning, go to work, uh, about a minute into my drive, silly light comes back on. Check your gauges. I'm like, not again. So I drove all the way, I ended up being f about 50 miles of driving, and I got back home and uh, still had power, but the light was on the whole time I was driving. Like, this can't be for real. And uh, so this morning, I did a bunch of research into it, and it looks like it's going to be the alternator. So what I did was I left the battery on, and I tested it, and it's just 11 and a half volts on a brand new battery. Like, okay, so it must be the alternator. Unplug the battery, and while it's running, and the car just shuts right off. The truck shuts right off. So I'm going into AutoZone here to get a new alternator and plug it in and see what happens. All right, new, all right, new alternator is here, and I'm gonna go. Swap it in and see what happens to the vehicle. So, apparently, when she, the lady here at AutoZone tested the alternator for me, it passed. Uh, kind of weird. But her explanation was that it does it quite frequently on, on that machine, that it'll pass, but yet it won't work in the customer's vehicle. Um, maybe because of the voltage load, and they can't replicate that kind of voltage load uh, in their test machine. But when you hook it up your vehicle or your battery, there is the voltage load. So, I'm gonna go plug it in here, but first, a short stop at the local Starbucks to recharge with a, with a sip of coffee. So this is where the little guy goes, right in that bracket assembly. Um, okay, so from what I saw on the old one, it was a 10 millimeter. Obviously, I think this one's a little bit bigger. Yeah. Definitely a little bit bigger. It's probably what I listened to another guy said it was 13, so. So I'll have to keep in mind that switching from a new alternator to an, on the old alternator to the new one, uh, this, I think it's a positive plug, is going to be bigger. And considerably. I wonder. Yeah, 5 sixteenths. Okay, so. I'm gonna have to retap the uh, positive that guy, drill it out with a 516 to be able to fit. Wow, look at that. Another thing to watch out this wire is completely bare. Oh, that's only like a nice blowout. That's what happened. This thing is copper, and copper is kind of a weird metal to drill through and spin the lathe and cut. It wasn't too bad, but since it being so thin, it's cut relatively easy. Kind of. Okay, so this should go well on the alternator. All right, I'm gonna hook this up real quick. So, again, this was either half inch or 13, these are 15s. Shut off before the lawnmower comes. 
I don't know if this was actually the problem of the if it created a short, but having a gigantic portion of a positive lead exposed is never a good idea in a car. And that is really good. All right, so I think what I do is attach the positive lead first. If I can, maybe not. Okay. Up and over. was doing was uh, before this is all set in um, or attached back up to the body of the car um, go ahead and tighten that guy up and <laughs> even though it dropped down to the abyss of the car the truck uh, it is a 13 millimeter for this new one things I wanted to test was was the voltage uh, continuity between the battery uh, wire to the alternator. From what I understand, I just disconnect the battery, uh, negative and positive disconnected, and I'm just gonna connect this to the alternator. All right, I finished all the tests on the, the box and reconnected all the wires back up. Uh, I unplugged the wires, the positive going to the alternator. Uh, to check continuity and it was correct. It was a uh, zero ohms, which is what you want or 0.1 whatever um, But there was no connection between the ground To the positive which I you know, obviously do not want that on an alternator um, So I'm gonna start it up and see what happens What I want to see is 14 volts hooking up to this guy. Thirteen point eight eight. Okay, that, that's better. It's not fourteen. Ever. Eight, seven, about the same. I think that's good. While this registers, this thing's a little bit off. 14, probably 0.5, 14.5 volts. And that's the way it used to normally run all the time for me. I think I fixed this, and that's good. Um, I'm not sure, I've read other reports about other other guys working on the vehicles, and this didn't remedy the problem of the, of the voltage dial acting funny. But for me, it did remedy it. Um, fortunately, this was a simple problem, not something weird with the computers. Anyway, uh, subscribe right here, <laughs> right here, and stay tuned for more videos to come.